Talib Babayan, for many years, has been a dedicated reporter in the Armenian community. She has the penmanship, which is uh, really amazing. And at its next stage in her life, we heard about her talent as a playwright. And uh, Tallinn, I'm humbled to share this good news that there is a new film by Tallinn Babayan. It's, uh, the, the, it's a 27 minute documentary, Wrapping uh, Under Fire. Uh, when did you get the idea? What was the experience like? What is it all about? Um, so uh, it was a project that I'd been working on um, for a couple of years. Uh, it was filmed on location in Artsakh and it was um, in Mar Dagerd. It was focused there. Uh, and Mar Dagerd uh, received the brunt of the devastation from the war in 1992. So when I set out uh, to work on the project, I wanted to bring a fresh angle uh, to Nagorno-Karabakh, to Artsakh. I mean, we all grew up, I mean, my generation especially, um, hearing about the war there, learning about it. Um, and I wanted to kind of show a different side to the people. Um, usually what we are seeing is a lot of tragedy, uh, also the nationalism and the fight for the land. Um, but I wanted to show something different with the people and have it reflect uh, their art. So um, I traveled there with a crew from, uh, from Armenia and we filmed there uh, on location for about a week. And then uh, I started working uh, with the editor, Artur Petrosyan. Um, I'm sure many people know him from his uh, beautiful work through the Eastern Diocese. And we decided that we would need a second crew to go back. So we had two crews actually go back and film. So it was definitely an ongoing uh, work in progress and project, uh, which culminated in this short documentary film that we were able to release uh, just recently. You know, you speak about number of years you were working on this and uh, how, how long did it take and did you know it was going to take that long and what were the challenges and what prepared you to take on a film such as the one documentary of 27 minutes you produced? Uh, yeah, at the outset, um, and this always happens with creative projects, I, I really thought at the outset it would be a feature film um, and it always happens that the way you budget or the way you foresee the filming going is going to be a lot smoother than it actually is. Um, but you have to take a step back sometimes and reassess, which is why it took longer than we initially planned. Mm -hmm. um, so, and all of us, you know, work and we have other projects going on. So uh, we had to find the right time. We built the right uh, team um, and the people who are involved in it. So it, it did take time. Um, but it ended up uh, uh, resulting in, in a film that I think a lot of people have found interesting and that has shed light uh, on a different aspect of Arsakh and the people. You know, you mentioned budget, money, you mentioned the right team. Tell us about the budget and the right team, especially how did you get, how easy was it for you to get to people like Cebu uh, Simonian or uh, Chris Zakian or others? Sure. Uh, so, in addition to Artur, uh, his wife Karine, also very talented, who also from the Eastern Diocese, and Chris Zagian, very talented writer. So I knew them from my time at the Eastern Diocese. Um, just such a, a great team that we had uh, working on it here in the diaspora. Uh, Sebu, um, I had known previously with his involvement with the Times Square commemoration, and I reached out to him to see if he would narrate, and he was very kind. Um, and he agreed to do so. He's, in addition to his band, Capital Cities, he's very heavily involved in the Armenian community and he is uh, very invested, him and his wife, um, in building up the community, bolstering it as much as possible. So it was great to have him on board as well. Um, with uh, the budget, I, I did receive two grants. Uh, one was United Armenian Charities, one was the Tekian Cultural Association. Um, but at a certain point, um, like I said, you know, when we had to send the second crew back, I mean, there are just things that come up that if you're, you know, you're committed to a vision uh, to the to the piece and to the film and you realize that there are just some hits you have to take and you have to do what's best and what's right for the project. So we did send a second crew back about 
maybe 10 months later. Uh, and then slowly like the editing process began and um, resulted in, in what we have now. Talin, you know very well that we're bombarded with videos and text messages and emails and we sometimes don't have time to even read these things. And when I got the uh, link to your documentary, not knowing it was you because I quickly went into it and I was first like uh, overwhelmed by the, by the photography of the mountains and the valleys and the farm life and the villages in Harappa. And really, I was very attached to the video, and I watched it in its entirety. And somewhere along the line, I saw your picture. I said, uh-oh, there is Tallinn. I know her. So I went back and reviewed the whole thing for another 27 minutes. All I'm saying, you were able to really uh, interest us in this documentary, and there was so many symbolism, so much powerful message. I would like you to talk to us about the coffins where the people would be building these coffins, making these coffins, and also the comments of the girl who was also rapping on the fire where she said, I don't care what they say, I'm going to do what I want to do. Tell us about that. Very powerful. Sure. sure. So also one of the unexpected um, surprises that, that come out when we're filming is we get to meet different people that we weren't planning on interviewing, for example. And Vika was the young lady in the film um, who had done a music video with um, Spartak. So uh, when I saw that, you know, we connected and we said, let's, you know, meet with her as well. I think it'd be great to have a young female teenage voice. And um, she was very um, full of vigor and she was very confident. Um, and it was really great to see that as well. Um, in Mardagerd, there is a cultural center um, and we spent some time there too. Uh, and the, the kids and the youth were preparing for the Marda Gerd uh, Independence Day. And there's, I, we were really blown away by the, the talent of these kids and also how they're mentored, you know, by Spartak, by Loka, by Eric, who are the three rappers in, in the film. And there's just such a strong community there. They really watch out for each other. They care about each other. Um, there was a little boy, he was eight at the time, his name is Sego, he did a, a rap and a music video uh, with Spartak. So they all really uh, work together and, and they're doing this just for the love of doing it and finding a different way um, to channel their emotions and their thoughts and you know their fight is through um, the pen and through their words. Um, for the coffin, uh, so that was an interesting aspect to it. Um, you know, and they even mention it, that they're so surrounded by death um, and that it kind of, to them, they can joke about it. Um, so in the beginning, we're seeing the coffin and them building it. Again, their lack of resources, that was also one thing that stuck out for me. Um, they really have the barest of resources and they're creating art out of it, which I think is you know, just phenomenal. Uh, so they are building that coffin in the beginning and then at the end we see it is for one of their uh, new songs and um, for uh, for the video that they themselves are recording and, and editing together. You know, it is a very true comment when I read about you and people say you're overabundantly talented, honestly, Tali. Uh, uh, journalism, playwright, now film. What is next? I'm not sure I need a new project now, so I have to think about what I'm what I'm going to work on. Um, my, my writing is ongoing. Uh, we want to continue promoting this film, actually. We tied it to two really good causes. In addition to viewing it, we wanted it to, to have more life and even more um, of a reason to put it out there instead of, you know, and, and in addition to just the art and, and voicing um, Spartag, Loka, Eriks, and uh, the citizens and the residents there. So we are focusing on the Armenian Wounded Heroes Fund and um, the Mardaket Cultural Center. So we could raise a little bit of money and um, contribute to them. Uh, it ties into the film um, and we just wanted to have it be more all encompassing instead of just watching it once and setting it aside. You know, there are so many ways of disseminating this news of the film, of the documentary. What was the response like so far? So far, it's been very positive. Um, people have been very excited to watch it and, and to get a glimpse. I know it's a unique topic, um, but that's what I like about it. It's, it's something different. It's something that we're learning. I wanted, um, I wanted 
and we all want it. The, of course, the war has to be incorporated into it and, and the aftermath of it, but um, we wanted to show a different side to it and, and people have really enjoyed it. You have shown a different side to it and I personally enjoyed it tremendously. Why did you make the film available? Like anybody could watch it now in its entirety, like as opposed to have it viewed at a cultural center and discuss it and maybe raise some funds or promote it. Why did you decide to just let it go? Uh, well, that's still a possibility down the line, and just because of the um, the situation in the world right now with the pandemic, um, we weren't sure when we would be in person, and I. I you know, we really didn't want to hold on to it any longer. I think it was time to set it free and it was a good time to do so. Um, so, and everyone could watch it and we wanted to make it accessible to the public and, and the way that it's made, uh, it's not geared towards the Armenian viewer. Uh, our objective was to educate and inform people who mm -hmm. weren't Armenian. You know, a lot of my American friends have seen it and it's given them more insight into the issue there. I mean, it, it's such a complex and, and loaded topic, especially as an Armenian, you have so many feelings that come out. Uh, when we were there, Mardagid is only a mile and a half from the Azeri border. Mm -hmm. So when we're there filming and when we went to the military base and um, and you just see the pride in the people and 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 their, the, the nationalism they carry within them and the fact that they haven't left. And Spartak mentions that in the film. He says, we could have left, but we didn't, how can we? And I, you know, I give them so much credit because this wasn't a two, three year war. This has been 30 years now um, that's been going on and it's part of their daily lives. And they are taking that situation, which some could see as, as a negative and they're turning it into something um, more positive and they're sharing it um, with the world. I mean, their videos have gotten a, a lot of views too. Um, so they're, they're trying to do something good and, and I, I respect that and we wanted to showcase that. What was the support or cooperation you got in Armenia or Haraba? How, what kind of a help or cooperation? Was there a lot of support you got there? Um, yeah, it was funny though because, you know, we tend to have this like American mentality whenever we ch and I of course I've been to Armenia many times mm. um but especially when it comes to our project so I was in Armenia and uh, a mutual friend had connected me uh with one of the departments there because they wanted to be aware that I was going to Artsakh and then they said when you go to Artsakh check in with um the ministry there or the department there. So we got there late. And then the next morning I didn't have time because I was going to meet with Spartak and Loka and Eric and start the interview. So I said, oh, I'll go later. So then Spartak, we're doing an interview and Spartak gets a phone call. And I had never given the names of anyone that I was going to interview yet in Armenia. Spartak gets a phone call and he gives the phone to me. He said, it's for you. I said, who, how is it for me? Who even knows I'm here? So they, tracked me down somehow a rapper oh Spartak's the rapper that they know and they got his number and they, so they said you have to come and register um and for our own safety you know mm -hmm. for our own safety so that that was something different and, and that was interesting for me um there were a lot of instances like that and actually there was also a lot of footage that we didn't have a chance to to put in the film because we didn't want to veer off topic we filmed in Shushi at the church we filmed at the school um, that these uh, three men in the film that they went to, we saw the bullet holes, um, we heard their stories. We were at the Stepanaget military base. There's a lot of unused footage that I'm also going to release um, over time, which I think will be interesting to viewers. Um, but we wanted to keep this compact and we uh, want to stay on topic, especially now, um, just with people's attention spans and everything going on. We, we wanted to just have a clear, concise story to set forward that could maybe start a conversation for the future. Talin, did you know you were going to call the documentary Wrapping on the Fire before you got to Armenia or did the title develop as you took these uh, shots? Um, I did not have too um, strict of a blueprint when I went to Armenia. It was mm -hmm. kind of one of those things, either with projects, you know everything that's going to happen ahead of time. You jot down every day, you know what scenes you're going to film um storyboards this that but it that wasn't going to work going to armenia um just because i know the nature of how things are there um uh, you know 
so we i put in a lot of flexibility in terms of what was going to happen and i think that's also what made it interesting there were a lot of unknowns like i didn't know that the marta Gerd's, um independence day was going to occur while we were still there and i have some footage from that i'm also going to release that was an incredible experience i mean the amount of it was in an open air field um there were so many kids out it was like a six hour concert the whole town came out um to perform it, there weren't any headliners it was each group there was a dance group um just so much talent that was coming you know from their own town and then at the end and i'll never forget this at the end they had fireworks um and loka turned to me and he said they see these fireworks they know why we are celebrating uh -huh. and that was so touching that wow like they are really it's really a mile away from here it is so close to you and they can see this and i mean it, it was a very poignant moment um it was off record and it wasn't it wasn't filmed um but i'll never forget that just for them to think that way you know i it wouldn't have even occurred to me but he said you know they see this they know why we're celebrating and i think at the end of the day when you have the heart and you are defending what's yours you will always prevail that's amazing with that, that point you raised. Uh, Tallinn, you know, there are many ways uh, to ask for support nowadays. Fund me, or I'm not very familiar with these uh, uh, ways of funding, but if there are people who want to support you, maybe hopefully have you come up with another documentary, what means do you have to inform us? Um, mostly social media is how we're doing it. Um, for this project, we're focusing, like I said, on the Mardagat Cultural Center and the Armenian Wounded Heroes Fund. Um, you know, I also felt like, you know, we went there, we filmed them. It should be reciprocal that they, these organizations, something should benefit them as well, you know, in addition to them viewing the film. I know they've had a lot of pride in seeing the film. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's something that's gone around their community and, and they're so happy that, you know, this has been able to be showcased, but we also wanted to do something, you know, in addition to that and get the community involved. So for right now, it's those two causes. And then in the future, you know, we'll see, we'll see if there's a, something else in, in the pipeline. I would love to go back um, and film some another profile in Artsakh, maybe this time do a feature, um, do something maybe that's a little bit longer because th there is just so, not only all the beauty there that you mentioned and like the natural landscapes, it's, uh, the people, they're just very fascinating and they have so much to offer and, and the world should hear what they have to say. If anybody wants to watch uh, Rapping on the Fire, they can just search it on YouTube? Yes, it's on YouTube. Um, like I said, it's free and open to the public and everyone can share it. And, um, you know, it's yeah. important to spread the word and share the mission and um, this topic. I think it's, it's very important for, for everyone to, to learn more about it. Anything in closing you would like to add? No, I just wanted to thank you for, for this platform and the time and your ongoing support and how you have kept the Armenian Radio Hour alive during all these months. So we very much appreciate that. Thank you, Talin, and good luck in your next project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.